Do you think that change is inevitable? Yeah, I think it'll happen. Um, whether it happens during the season, I think that my preference always would be to try and get to the end of a season. I think, to be honest with you, the boardroom is so naive. It's unbelievable. But on the, on the manager... It... He let me finish. It's so naive. To give him an extended contract, knowing the cycle of Mourinho with three, year, three years, the third year is always the difficult year for him. So, 18 months in... He's second in the league, he's won two trophies in his first season, the players are happy with him. At that point is the point to hold your nerve and keep him hungry in that third season. The minute he came back from pre-season, he was at it and the club lost control. And there isn't that experience or that knowledge in the football club above him to be able to manage him and control him and handle him. And he's, you know, his agent's out last week, he goes into press conferences, they're not sure what he's going to say next and they don't know what to do with him. But that has happened. The contract has happened. Given what's happened, I know, since but they're the now paying for it now. Season, they're now paying for it. Given now. what's happened since the start of the season, is there any benefit from keeping him there? Well, the problem they'll have now is that it'll cost an absolute fortune to lose him. When you lose a manager during the season, you've always then got the situation of who comes in. Are they going to get the manager that they want for the next three, four years at the football club? It's not just as easy as saying, "Well, let's get rid of the manager," because Manchester United need, a, need, need to reset, and it's not just the manager. It's deeper than that. I said it before the game today that. There is an incredible level of naivety and they lost control of the football club when they gave him a new contract 18 months in. They should never have done that. It was obvious what was happening. And at the start of the season, the minute he came out in that first pre-season tour and made that first press conference, he should have gripped him then and said, we're Manchester United, one more of them. You know what I mean? We're Manchester United. You've got to get a grip of your football club. You Gary, can't... you speak about that, about Manchester United and leadership from the top. But then on the other hand, we criticise whoever is the board, whoever, because they don't back him with the centre-back. What is but the leadership point. when you actually make well, a decision? Absolutely, you make a decision and you back him by giving him the centre-backs he wants, but then they didn't, they pulled out on him. They withdrew. They gave him the contract, then withdrew on the signings. So what would be well, the that's, that's, that's why he's frustrated. That's why he's frustrated. They, did, they didn't back him. Again, they gave him the contract. Whatever players he identified, I know they brought some players in. Not good enough, but clearly in all his press interviews, he keeps talking about, we're short, we need some more players. And that is defenders. I think that's where his frustration goes back to pre-season. I know there's other stuff going on in the background with the Pogba, etc. But I think that's where he was really fed up with not getting the support in the back. And he probably felt would they have, his would CV... They to to 50 million for Fred. Is it 50 million? That's right. Should that not have been spent on a defender if he felt... You know, when you're a manager, you, know, you prioritise. You know, no one can go out and buy 10 new players. You prioritise. You look at your weakest place... And if the right one comes along, you're going, you're going to take him. And, and to spend 50 million on a midfield player when your your real weakness is at centre back is someone's made a bad. Oh, they've got a week, they've, they've got a weakness in central midfield no, as well. No but, you, no, but you target your weakest area of your team. The, the, the centre back thing, I I, I I get a feeling that at the end of Mourinho's time, whenever that may be, we'll all go back to this. He wasn't backed with with the centre back. You used to be managers for a lot, you had spells at management. What manager gets everything they want? Alex Ferguson didn't get everything he wanted. Remember when Alexis Sanchez went to Man United? Pep Guardiola wanted him. Is he still talking about it now? No, he moved on and got someone else. We're talking about one player, a centre-back. Will that revolutionise what we're watching from Manchester United? One centre-back. I don't think it will, and it happens a lot where managers don't get the player that they want. Roy, back to one of Jamie's original points, that he doesn't feel that this manager is getting the most out of this group of players. What's your take on it? Well, looking at the results, yeah, it's, it's hard to disagree with that. Of course. But I just think there's, I think there's more to it than that. I really do. I think that the easiest thing is to say, look at the manager, and, and, and because I've done a little bit of it, the, the, the manager seems to want to suffer, get, get him out the door. His CV warrants, would it be another year? It certainly won't do anything, in, I think, during the course of the season. But I would say, Marino, they thought, well, Pep Guardiola would have been a brilliant manager, a genius. Klopp here. I think these t Pep Guardiola in his first season at Man City won nothing. Went to the board and said, I need four defenders. He didn't go, I need one. He went four, and they backed him. No, he might have asked for other players, but they backed him. Klopp, over the last few years, we've been watching Liverpool go, yeah, they're not bad, but they're desperate for a goalkeeper. They're desperate for a centre-half. And they wouldn't have got it. And all of a sudden, now we're all sitting there going, Liverpool are going places. Still to win a trophy. And I think Mourinho now is in that position where he went, they said, OK, you can talk about players who've come in, it's not worked out, but it doesn't mean to say you make a bad situation worse by persevering with these lads. Man United bought players before when we were there, or Alex Ferguson there. And it's not worked out. You move them on. That's the name of the game. We're talking here about how many points behind Liverpool and Man City. That's going to get bigger. That's, 
that's not Man United's problem. The problem is get back to being a really good team and winning football matches and being, having a solid foundation. That's, that's think the he problem you've got, because that, that's what I was about to say when we went back to Liverpool. I, as I'm, if you're a Man United supporter, what light are you seeing at the end of the tunnel? There's not a lot out there. You know, that, that again today, arguably your hardest away game, coming to Anfield, that was the first time that 11 players had played together. So I'm, as a, you try to be down the middle, you try to be non-biased, but as, if you're looking at Man United, over the course of the season, you're thinking Chelsea, they did really well, they nicked a result in Turin, showed a bit of you know, character, never stood high attitude at times. But in terms of football, that this lot are playing, Tottenham are playing, and, and Man City are playing, it, they're, they're, they're a country mile away from where they need to be, but, as Man United. But, Graham, I agree. I mean, look, Roy made the point, Jose Mourinho's been the most successful manager along with Pep Guardiola for the last 20 years. He's not a mug, by the way. He's one of the best. Now United fans, they don't want to go to the game. They're not looking forward to the match. And, but that's not just now. That was under David Moyes and it was the manager's fault. That was under Louis van Gaal and it was the manager's fault. That's now under Jose Mourinho, it's the manager's fault. There's three managers who have all got good records, good managers, one of them the best of the last 20 years along with Pep Guardiola. And that's why you have to say at this moment in time, something's broken. You can change the manager. And Manchester United, I'm sure, will change the manager at the end of the season at the latest. I'm pretty certain of that. We're all pretty certain of that. Jose Mourinho, to be fair, before that Newcastle game a few weeks ago, looked beaten. He looked like he'd had enough. I take your point about you can't always get what you want as a manager. But on the other hand, if you're giving the manager a new contract, it was obvious Manchester United needed new centre-backs. And when you say that you publicly want new centre-backs and then you don't get them, how does it make those centre-backs that are still playing out there feel? So, hang on, what are we saying is the situation Man United are in now because he hasn't been backed for one centre-back? No, it's, it's a multitude of things. It's more complex than is the manager getting the best out of the players. Is it because he's not been backed? It's a deep problem. He's resetting. The whole club needs resetting. Seven years ago, two huge figures left that football club that had great knowledge of, of the game that left. And what happened was there were people over the financial and commercial side of the club who were brilliant at the job. There's no doubt they've revolutionised that side of the game. Commercially, Liverpool are now following Manchester United. Other clubs are now following that model. But they were then put in charge of the football side of things and they're not competent enough to do it. Do you, They've got to now hand it over to people who are good enough to run the football side of the club. Roy, how far do you trace back these problems? Is it as simple as to say this all started when Sir Alex Ferguson left? Well, I suppose it, yeah, it, we always knew that the club was going to suffer when Alex Ferguson left and obviously David Gill left as well and we're honourable people who knew the club inside out. But I, I don't think for one minute I, I, I would have thought Man United would have fallen so far behind. You knew it would be a difficult year. OK, Marino's nicked a couple of trophies, Van Gaal, FA Cup. OK, and you're thinking, OK, that'll steady the ship a little bit. But we go back to it. I know it's not always... And I, I agree with Jamie about sometimes as a manager you have to move on if you don't get everything you want. We see Pochettino. We always talk about Pochettino or Tottenham trying to get players. And they always seem to be let down, but he just gets on with it and the players roll their sleeves up. But I think the problems are so bad at United. Defensively, you've got to have some sort of foundation to go forward, and I think we'll keep going back to that. Short midfield, OK, and the Pogba situation will drag on. The only other concern I would have about Marino is that we're seeing him on a match day. I'd love to know what the atmosphere is like at the training ground. I'd like to know, is, is it a happy camp? Because when we've seen the players' body language, I don't get the impression they enjoy playing for Man United. I get that impression with some of them. Yeah, they're under pressure, everyone's under pressure but they don't look, some of them look disinterested. Is that coming from the manager? I can't just blame the manager up because, I, I, again, like I said at the start of the programme, your own pride at some stage must kick in. So when you cross that line for Man United, you give everything you've got. But I go back to it. I think a lot of the players for Man United, midfielders as well, are not good enough for Man United. If there was a change, and from what you're all saying, that would appear unlikely at this minute. They have Cardiff, Huddersfield, Bournemouth and Newcastle in the next four games as an opportunity to regroup. But if there was a change, Roy, what do you think a new man would go in there and do? How could he affect change right here, right now? Oh, good question. I think he'd try and get some players maybe more back on side, where Pogba, even though, again, I go back to it, he's, he's got to sort himself out. I honestly think if a manager went in there, if a Pochettino went into Man United next summer, he would say we need some players to get Man United back to where we're to compete at the top level. You're on about the games coming up. You're not judged as a Man United player by beating Fulham and Huddersfield and Newcastle. Them teams can be beaten easily if you're playing for Man United. It's what you do against the bigger teams. That's what you're judged on if you want to be a top player playing for a top football club. Yeah, I, I, think, if you, you, I think you're right. If you're coming as a manager of Manchester United and you were a big manager coming in next, I think the, you would look obviously in the dressing room and what more do you, but you'd also sort out above you. You'd want some decent scouts. You want to make sure you've got your right recruitment guy above you because Liverpool, City, Chelsea, 
Tottenham, the hammering Manchester United hands down in the recruitment side of things. But Gary, let's not get carried away with the Tottenham's and the Liverpool's just yet, because again, these teams haven't won trophies yet. I know, but the players that they're signing for the value are far but better. The recruitment is huge, obviously. Man United have got it wrong over the last uh, few years. A blind man can see that. Well, I agree. They, they have to win trophies, but I, I said at the top of the show, Mourinho on his press comments before the game got a little dig in a clock. That's obviously you know the norm. He hasn't won nothing, and Mourinho's won two trophies. But but th these clubs now, and it's probably not something I like. They probably value probably Champions League football more than the the Carlin Cup, and it's all about the two big trophies in terms of the league and the Champions League. Liverpool and Tottenham may not win them. But what they are is they're actually challenging for Liverpool got the Champions League final last season. They look like they can challenge this season. Jose Mourinho's coming to Manchester United. They finished sixth in the first season. They look like they're going to finish sixth again. So they're actually challenging for the real big trophies. And I go back to, you know, these lads know more about Manchester United than me. The, the reason you bring Mourinho in, it's not to bring youth players through. It's not to carry on the traditions of Manchester United playing free-flowing football. Forget that. Man United, after two probably mistakes in, in managers that they brought in, it's win at all costs. Forget the football, forget the youth, forget playing with wingers. We just want to win. That's what you bring Mourinho for. And he's not even come close to winning those big trophies. And when Mourinho got the job, we were all delighted because we're thinking... Uh, Mourinho and Guardiola, the two top managers as you said over the last 20 years, we're thinking what happened at Madrid and Barcelona. We don't even speak about Mourinho and Guardiola now in the same sentence. And that is the biggest thing that tells you that it hasn't gone right now. Guardiola's just gone there and Mourinho's actually gone backwards. Graham, do you think United will finish in the top four? No. I think that hurts them today. There'll be a lot of criticism after that today. I think it's an unhappy ship. You know, I, I can jump back to you saying they need centre-halves. So he went public. Man United... In my lifetime, I've always been a classy outfit. I've always done things the right way. Now, I don't believe coming out and saying, I want two centre-backs, I need this, I need that. What does that do if you're Smalling or Jones, Bailey in that dressing room? You're deflated. And then, and Roy will know what I mean by this, you only have to follow up with one or two in a dressing room, and that could, that could easily multiply to be in the most of the dressing room. So I, that's where I think he is right now. I think he's, he's got a dressing room that's... that's um, Give up on him. Mourinho has always been like that through the media. So I think it's not been over the last few months. I remember he was manager of Real Madrid. He got beaten at Barcelona 5 0. He got interviewed after the game. And he said, Oh, that wasn't my team out there. But I don't think Mourinho's changed drastically over the last few months. I think it's always been about him. When his teams win, it's down to him, the tactical side of it. When they lose, oh, I'm short of players. There's, there's, no, there's no surprise on the Mourinho front of that. So uh, Top four for you, Roy? United. United. No chance.